Thanks for joining us on The Big Story. I'm Harsha Subramaniam. India's biggest bank, State Bank of India, is staring at new bad loans much more than it had anticipated. The bank had forecast 6,000 crores of new bad loans to be created in fiscal 13 and analysts say half of that may have been created in the first quarter of this year itself. Diana, in fact, is standing by to tell us more details on this. Diana, how bad is the situation for State Bank of India and how worse is, is it than what was anticipated? Well, over the last one year in FY12, we saw a lot of uh, the bad loan uh, fever spread out uh, across uh, the entire banking sector and uh, SBI, of course, was one of uh, the big biggest and in fact the largest uh, bank that came into the forefront and a lot of focus uh, was put on their NPLs and their gross NPAs. Now, in light of uh, the improving situation in the last quarter of uh, the previous financial, well, the management gave uh, some kind of strong guidance uh, indicating that gross NPLs would come down. Uh, let's just focus on what really were the, were the estimates that the management has given probably guidance in some sense. They've said that uh, bad loans, of course, uh, for the first quarter are estimated uh, to be higher. If you look at uh, SBI itself, the management had guided for net slippages of 2,000 crores in Q1. They've guided for an outgive. They've given an outlook of gross uh, slippages, uh, of additional gross slippages, a run rate for every quarter of around 4,000 to 4,500 crores. And for the entire year, uh, like you mentioned, FY13, They've given a, a guidance of around 6,000 crores of net new NPLs. Now, what really are management, uh, what really are analysts who have been interacting with the management now indicating? Well, analysts who have been meeting with the management over the last one week have indicated that gross slippages for the first quarter itself are likely to be in the range of around 5,000 to 5,500 crores. Net slippages, on the other hand, are expected to be around 3,000, 3,500 crores, which is much higher than what the management indicated for the entire year. The entire year, they've indicated 6,000 for the first quarter itself almost half of that has been indicated restructured loans are expected to be on the higher side 2500 to around 3500 crores is what analysts are indicating clearly indicating a bleak outlook for SBI as well as the, the entire NPA situation that could be playing out in fact Morgan Stanley uh, which has one of the lowest targets for SBI at 1425 which is a 33 percent downside from the current market price. Thanks Diana for putting that in perspective. Uh, joining us on the show now is uh, Himendra Hazari head of equity researcher at Nirmal Bank Institutional Equities. Uh, Himendra, many thanks for joining in. You've always expressed concerns over the asset quality of, uh, of State Bank of India. Do you believe that they have intensified for fiscal 13? No, it is bound to be apparent, you know, even for anyone who has been looking at the banking sector would have told you that, that in a process of an economic uh, deceleration, it is highly unlikely that the banking industry and particularly the largest bank in the country uh, could continue to report, uh, you know, very marginal growth in NPAs. I could never understand how the management could have guided, you know, the figures that they did at the end of the fourth quarter of last year. Because it is very clear that if you see the way the industrial growth is happening, the way the GDP growth is happening, uh, that the global environment is deteriorating it is bound to have an impact on the asset quality of the Indian banking sector. And therefore, it is of no surprise to me that uh, the NPA growth is going to be much higher than what the management of SBI had guided. Uh, Hemant, just a point, you know, is, do you believe this is a temporary one-off rise in new NPLs largely because of, you, as you say, the overall slowdown in the economy? Or do you believe there's a deep-rooted problem with State Bank of India as a whole? No, I don't, you see, there's a deep-rooted problem according to me with the Indian economy and with the global environment. It is not a temporary problem that the Indian economy is having. It's not a temporary uh, problem that the global economy is facing with. These are structural problems both globally as well as domestically. And therefore, the largest bank in this country and other similarly large banks cannot be immune to the broader economic environment in which they work. I take your point on that. All I'm asking you is in terms of new NPL creation, um, is this the worst that we're going to see or do you, do you see the problem intensifying if, as we go ahead in the year? All right, that depends on what your you know, global outlook and your domestic outlook is. In according uh, the view that we are holding is that the economic slowdown is going to continue and therefore one could continue to see a rise in NPLs one would continue to see a rise in the more important number of uh, corporate debt restructuring. Uh, the, probably the growth may not be as high as one saw in FY12, particularly in the CDR. 
but what we are seeing even in the CDR is that the, the, the absolute amount of fresh proposals coming uh, to the banking industry remain quite high. You know, the, the recent newspaper reports indicate uh, that in the month of uh, June about 7,000 crore fresh proposals have come in, which is a high number. You know, th there's always this, this correlation that one talks about in terms of capex growth and the credit growth, uh, Hemendra. Uh, we have seen certain structures, sectors where this investment is absolutely absent. Telecom, mining, uh, power, for instance. Do you see that affecting the loan growth as well of the industry as a whole? How bad are you penciling in, in your numbers? Obviously, those sectors which had grown their growth rates very aggressively, like infrastructure, power, uh, these sectors are very clearly decelerating. And if you see the fresh proposals that are coming into the CDR, you will find that the maximum is coming from infrastructure, it is coming from iron and steel, it is coming from uh, textiles. Now, if you're also seeing the growth in the normal credit for the industry, the bulk really came from infrastructure. So now we can see that the incremental asset quality infrastructure is going to enter the banking system. It will first be reflected in CDRs and then it will be reflected in NPAs. Although I've always maintained the view that there's no difference between an NPA and corporate debt restructuring. Emetra, you know, you said this is not just a State Bank of India problem, this is an industry-wide problem. Uh, would you say that there are banks out there which are more vulnerable than the others? Is, is there a classification that you would make or a distinction that you would make between private sector banks and public sector banks? You will find that uh, in general, the PSU banks have larger infrastructure exposures. Having said that, even in the new private sector banks, you have banks like Axis Bank and ICICI Bank, which also which have you know, a very decent size infrastructure exposure. And with the large PSU banks like State Bank of India, Punjab National, Canara Bank, uh, you know, some of these large banks have taken a lot of risk on their portfolios. And I think uh, in the months to come and probably in the one or two years, uh, you will see a lot of these problems uh, coming up as NPAs. They're already coming up as, you know, CDRs. Uh, All right, Hamindra Hazari, we'll have to leave it there. Many thanks for joining us and putting that in perspective for us. That was Himendra Hazari on State Bank of India and the issue of bank loans. But still put a break on the big story. Coming up next, India Inc's capital investment is down a whopping 13-year low. We'll tell you why and the road ahead in just a moment. Welcome back to The Big Story. India Inc's capital investment spending as a proportion of its sales has crashed to its lowest levels in 13 years. That's not all. Data from the Reserve Bank of India reveals that if you look beyond fiscal 13, it could be 60% lower. Priyank Lakia is standing by to tell us how bad the situation is. Priyank. Astonishing figures coming out there. Let's, let's just quickly analyze as to what we've actually picked up from the RBI report itself. Now, what the RBI report says is basically is that it suggests that CAPEX going ahead for FY13 could be at around about 60% of, of the level in FY12. Or you turn that around, it basically tells you 40% lower. And the other figure, if you, if you look at FY13 and beyond, it could actually be at 40% of the level seen in FY12. Now, remember, for FY12, the figures so far are obviously only till Q3 FY12 that is available. So, so we, we are now saying that we know corporates are not spending in fiscal 12. Right. They're not going to be spending in fiscal 13 as well. It might even be worse in fiscal 14. Exactly. And by worse, by when I say worse, it could actually be low by nearly 60% is the kind of figure that we're actually talking about. Mm -hmm. Because when you take 40% of level of FI12 and you turn that around, it actually means 60% lower is mm -hmm. where it actually could be. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's one part of the figure there. And the other part here being that channel checks and data also suggest that banks are not giving approvals. It's not only that they're not giving approvals, but nor are corporates actually coming in for large ticket loans for approvals either. So it's a twin situation. Nor are banks approving any big ticket loans, nor are the uh, corporates going ahead and asking for big ticket loans as far as CAPEX is concerned mm. from that point of view. Now, the other data point which we were addressing earlier also, when we talk about CAPEX as a percentage of sales also, that's the astonishing figure. Mm. Because on, a, on an average basis, for the BSE 500 companies where data is available so far, mm. it's average around about 8.6%. Mm. Now, the figure is at 6.4%, which is a 13-year low that we've actually hit there. 
Thanks, Priyanka, for putting that in perspective. In fact, uh, we've got someone who, who understands the situation from a corporate investment standpoint. Uh, we've got Vishwanathan from Bosch. Uh, Vishwanathan, many thanks for joining in. He joins us from our studios in Tokyo. I uh, really appreciate you taking us uh, time out for us. My first question to you is we've clearly seen a demand slowdown, which is perhaps the key trigger behind a slowdown in, in CapEx as well. Uh, we've seen the auto companies doing it. We've seen the auto ancillary companies doing it. Give us a sense of how bad do you think this demand slowdown is and how long is this likely to last? Yeah, good morning. Uh, the automotive market in India for the last six months has been going through some tough times, uh, particularly a couple of segments in the automotive market, uh, primarily the commercial vehicle segment and the tractor segment are witnessing some amount of slowdown. Uh, ranging from 5 to 7 percent. Uh, this was a bit unexpected considering the fact that India has had a great run over the last uh, five, six years in the automotive industry. However, I must also mention here that couple of other segments within the automotive market, namely the light commercial vehicle segment and the passenger car segment, they are doing quite well. So overall, we are not seeing much of a growth in the last two or three quarters in the automotive segment and uh, maybe this will continue for one more quarter uh, and we are hoping that in the fourth quarter of this calendar year 2012 the demand will revive and we will see again a uh, pickup in the commercial as well as in the off-highway segments. If, if you say Mr. Vishwanathan that you're expecting demand to come back only by the fourth quarter of this year, uh, when can one realistically expect any resumption in the capital investment sp spending, expansion facilities and so on? See, capital expenditure is not really dependent upon quarter to quarter movements. We are talking about medium to short term and in this uh, respect, I think uh, almost all the OEMs are continuing to invest, barring some very minor adjustments here or there. Similarly, component manufacturers are also looking at medium to short term, um, long term, and therefore uh, we continue to look India as a positive uh, story, and we continue to look at uh, expanding our manufacturing capacities, investing more on. Uh, engineering and uh, research and development activities as well as creating other infrastructural facilities. What can, do you believe, turn sentiment around in triggering back demand for you? Um, is it only a function of interest rates? Is it a function of other factors? Uh, while you're telling me that perhaps cap CapEx is not so bad as, as, as our data numbers show, uh, do you believe this correlation will continue to exist? I do believe because uh, there are basically three factors which determine the demand for uh, commercial vehicles, passenger cars, or tractors. One is the economic activity, economic activity in the industrial side, economic activity in the agricultural side, and also economic activity in the services sector which uh, lead to passenger car mobility demands. The second factor that determines is, of course, the availability of finance and the cost of finance. Uh, these two have a very important role to play because 70-80% of vehicles sold in the Indian market are financed out of these uh, uh, borrowings and lendings. And finally, of course, the uh, next important uh, uh, element is the overall sentiment and overall uh, feeling good or feeling bad factor. If these three are really uh, turning around, then you will see a kind of uh, growth rate that we were, we were used to in the years 2010 and 2011. Very quickly, my final question to you, Mr. Vishwanathan. You know, the, the fuel price hike is also a major factor that has, that has played a role and, and it's impacted your industry. Uh, other than just fuel price, what are the large policy decisions uh, that you're expecting that can happen immediately, that can turn the sentiment, as you say, around? See, basically some reform measures and uh, uh, some uh, confidence boosting measures like uh, uh, foreign direct investment in certain sectors which were not allowed. That is one aspect. The second aspect is that if we can see continue, continue decline or even uh, oil prices stabilizing at $80, $85 
per barrel of crude, then that could also play a very important factor. Finally, I think uh, once we have good monsoons and people see that the economic turnaround is going to happen, uh, there will be obviously uh, demand for commercial vehicles as well as passenger cars. Mind you, passenger cars in this country in India is only about 15 or 16 per, per thousand population. In our neighboring countries, leave alone Western markets or markets like Jap Japan, uh, the car uh, per capita is about 16 or 17, and there is a lot of room for growth uh, in the passenger car segment. Similarly, we see significant levels of opportunities for growth in commercial vehicles as well as off-highway vehicles. Right. Mr. Vishwanathan, we've run out of time. Many thanks for joining us on this discussion. That was Vishwanath uh, from our Bloomberg studios in Tokyo. That's all the time we have on The Big Story. Thanks for watching.